morning as we go to the Chumash for today. Today is Thursday, which is the four, fifth reading in the portion of Bay. We're holding on chapter 12, verse number 21. And take for yourself, say, take yourself in your home, and take yourself a sheep for your family, and to slaughter the Passover. Now she says, Go forth, whoever has sheep shall draw for his own. And whoever needs to buy shall buy it in the market. To your family, a lamb for each house. And then you shall take a good You'll take a bunch of hyssop. But the and you'll immerse it into the blood. which you put into the basin. And then you'll extend it on the on the lintel. And on two doorposts. So the lintel is the top part. The doorpost is the sides. When Adam Hashem which is the blood that's in the basin, Adam they say to, and then you shouldn't go out. Ishmi Pesach basin. Nobody should leave their home at Baker until the morning. Now she says, Ezei min yarek is a piece of herbs that has thin stalks. A good is Ezei. Three stalks is called a bunch. Hashem Asaf. What's a saf? A saf is a vessel, like a silver. Silver pitch pitchers. Why does the Tay the Tay repeat repeated again? That I wouldn't what you should not say that the Tay means one immerses for all the three sprinkling. Therefore, it says again that's in the basin to indicate that every sprinkling shall be for the blood that's in the basin. For each touching and immersion is necessary to put them yet when you do what the speed place you're putting in. So you put it, you dip the, you dip the thing into the blood. You put it on the doorpost, one side, right side, left side, and the top of the lint. Atom they say to. This tells us that once a master, a destroyer, is given permission to destroy, he does not discriminate between the righteous and the wicked. And night is a time for destroyers are given permission, as it says that each beast as for a forest moves about. So therefore, nighttime. Is a dangerous time, especially when there's destruction going on to the world, and therefore everybody should stay home. The Lord will pass over the Egypt to smite them, but Saddam will see the blood. And God will jump over the door, and He won't let the destroyer love them to come into your house. Rashi says, O Pasach, again, Pasach has two meanings. One meaning of Pasach is he'll have mercy. That's how the, the uncle is translated. Pasach means mercy. And some say it means Pasach means to jump over. Rashi she says, and he will not give. He's not granting the ability to enter. As in the God did not permit him. Verse 24, Shmaitim is a dog as a lachaikul of an echa daily shall spatter as a statue for you and for your children forever. Oh, you can saw a lot. It's in the coming time you can come to the land. As God is going to give you, as God promised you. So I spoke to you. You shall observe this service. As she says, Taylor connects this commandment contingent upon the entering the land. But in the desert, they were obligated only to bring one place of sacrifice, the one they performed in the second year, which they did by divine mandate. That's why the Jews in the desert only kept this concept only on for the second year of the desert. After that, they didn't do that until they came to the land of Israel. As he said, bring you into the land, but they were supposed to go into the land right away. Ultimately, took them 40 years. Verse 26, and I'll come to pass where your children will say, What is the service? Ultimately, the generation is going to go on. Children are going to ask, What is this service? Tell them, 
This is a sacrifice to God, Hashem Pasach Avati Bin Esau, which did, which, which uh, jo God jumped over the, 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 the houses of Israel, the Mitzrayim in the land of Egypt, the Nakhvet Mitzrayim, when he smite the, the Egyptians, but as and God protected our houses. And the people prostrated themselves, they bowed down. What well, actually says in thanksgiving for the tithing of redemption, and number two is the entry of the land of Israel and the tithing of the children that they would have. Here, God promised them first, they're going out of Israel. Number two, they're coming to the land of Israel. Number three is Baruch Hashem, they're going to have children and grandchildren and great grandchildren. So they were extremely happy. Verse 28, and that's what the, the children of Israel went, and they did, which God commanded Meshav, by adding, and adding Cain also, that is what they did. As she says, now that they already did it, wasn't it said to them in Eschoidish? Since they accepted upon themselves to do it, the credits them as if they have done it. Because this is a schedule, which we're holding, we're holding 10 days before. What it means by Yasu? We're holding, they didn't do nothing. They had to wait till the 10th of the month. But they, when they, since they accepted upon themselves to do it, the Torah considers as if they did it. Scripture counts the going. They give a word to the going as if they did it. They went all out with excitement to do the mitzvah, mitzvah in 10 more days. And the Abish is happy. Even with the going out, the journey. This comes to tell us Israel's praise that they did not omit anything of all the commandments that Meshach and Aaron told them to do. What's the mean? So they did. But with Aaron, not only did the, 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 the Jews do it, but Meshach and Aaron also did exactly what they told the Jews to do. And they went out and they prepared to buy or to take a carbon pesa, the whole thing that the God asked them to do in Mitzrayim. And that completes the Chumash for today. We now go to the Tanya of this day, the Tanya of the day. And we continue chapter, 20, chapter 19. So, the al Rebbe says, however, it's explaining that what happens to a Jew that's in Golis, self Golis. A Jew that's in exile. What means in exile? And he's taking his neshama. He's taking the wisdom of his neshama. And he puts it into Clippus. He puts it into the hiding. It's shy. It, doesn't let, it doesn't let it shine. Right? However, if his senses are so dull, why is it that even the worst sinner is willing to sacrifice his life for God? when his face is put to the test. So why, why do we wake up when it comes to self-sacrifice? If we are so dull that we don't have any kind of feeling to God because we, we are clothed in this clipper, in this covering, the question is why suddenly do we wake up? The answer that al explains that the clipper can obstruct only matters that that do not directly affect God's souls, nefesh of chokhmah. Problem is that the clipper, the covering, cannot touch something that it doesn't, have, that's it, that is infinite, something that's above seichel. The clipper, clipper, the covering, the yetzahara, the animistic soul, can only affect intellectual things. Because if you think you're smart, the animal soul says, I'm smarter than you. That's the thing. However, in such matters, there is faith, as the, which comes from the true wisdom of God. Clipper, no, no nefesh of Bahamas, no clipper can neither penetrate nor obstruct. Consequently, in such matters, the Jews are aware, is aware that he's come to the sin would mean not being torn away from God, and therefore he readily laid down his, his life rather than sin. That's why when it comes to Giving up his life, that's above intellect. That's irrational. That's suddenly the Jew is ready to do the irrational act. When it comes to the rational, oh, suddenly he thinks that he can outrun 
he can he can outcome his godly self. Godless has that should be the finest chachma. Exile the faculty of chachma is only the chinas hamish pashetes. Is only what diffuses from chachma. The way chachma comes down into the uh, into understanding. That is what is uh, that is what is covered by your animal soul. Throughout the nefesh that animates the divine, vi divine vitality. Being in exile, it is unable to pervade the entire soul and through it, the entire body. So once, nervous, what's in Kabbalah is called nervous, the, the avenues of, of wisdom, the, uh, the springs of wisdom, the, ca the canals of wisdom. So the, 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 what comes forth from wisdom, and it, 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 it's supposed to go through Bina, it's supposed to come into understanding, it's supposed to come into the emotions. Your animal soul, my animal soul, doesn't allow it to do it. But the root and the core of wisdom, the beneficial kiss, that's in the godly soul, that's in the mind. Can never be closed with the classic that's in the heart. That level of chachma is never covered up. That chachma is, un is untouchable, so to say. It's not put in any sad cloth in the left part of the heart in its true state of uh, uh, in, uh, in a true state of exile, meaning so that it's powerless to prevent it from sinning. It's merely dormant by the wicked people. And it does not exercise its influence within them, meaning not creating within a Jew the spirit of self nullification for God that he ought to be created. So it's basically like a sleep. As long as they're busy in their mind, with understanding and preoccupied with mundane pleasures. So as long as they are involved in their mundane world and in, mund and in mundane pleasures, my true intellect is asleep. See, even scientifically, we use a very small part of our brain. So you lose, most of our brain is out to sleep. The false faculty of knowledge, dot, and astonishing bina, are lower than Chachma, yet the level of Chachma is prevented from acting upon them and upon the others, the lower faculties, as long as they are immersed in mundane pleasures. Thus, the Chachma of their divine soul is dormant, not dead, dormant, it's not being used. It's not there, it's there, but not there. It has lost none of its. It, it has lost none of its potency, only its ability to exercise it. Just as when one sleeps, he retains full possession of his of his faculties, though he cannot use them. He's sleeping. So that's why when it comes certain times, boom, and the shama wakes up. And a wicked, even a wicked person is confronted with a test of faith. Give a mile of dust, which goes above intellect, his own intellect. Oh, once you touch the person's, you're going higher than his intellect. You're asking him something that is above his intellect. You're trying to challenge his essence. Oh, then his essence is away. And you touch the soul. Which is the, the, the source of the soul, is the wisdom, uh, which is the source of faith. Now, suddenly, the Jew wakes up. He wakes up from his sleep. And it does what it's supposed to do. With the, spirit, with the strength of God, which is the source of his soul. Which is in the soul. So, the influence being is to create a spirit of self sacrifice for God. As the Alter Rebbe said, it says, the Lord awakened as one of us. This verse refers to the level of Chachma, the light of Ain Seif clothed with her in, which was previously in a state of sleep, inactive, 
arises and exerts its influence when faced with the test of this revelation of Chachma leads even the sinner to withstand the test of faith in God. Without any reasoning or knowledge, in any comprehension, which would motivate him to sacrifice. As Gabal al Clippers to overcome the coverings, as Taiva Sa'ilam, and even the desires of this world. A hat of Isa, which is allowed and permitted or prohibited, which he's used to doing. We talk about a person that's sinning. He's used to doing all this. Suddenly, it overcomes it. Suddenly, he despises it suddenly. He despises something that he was used to doing. Meaning, in this state of readiness of mention, when a person is ready to be most nefesh, sinner not only overcomes his desire for worldly pleasures, but he loses it entirely. He suddenly loses the desire. Not he has to even overcome it. He hates it. The objects in his past desire are now detestable to be disgusted by it. That's about Shuvah. This is the real, this is the real concept of about Shuvah. A person that suddenly changes his life. Something affected him and he transforms his life. Everything that he enjoyed suddenly becomes irrelevant. And not only relevant to him, he can't imagine even that he would do ever wanted it. Which doesn't make sense. And chooses God as his portion and his lot. Meaning, he dedicates to God both his intellectual faculties of intellect and emotion, referred to as one's portion and his higher transcending faculties, his will and pleasure, which is called one's lot. So, you have a portion. To your lot. A lot, like a, like a lottery. So we know, when you say a lottery, like the Purim is a lottery. So a lottery is something above intellect. Something, my chay, like my part, is because this belongs to me. If I win the lottery, it's something that happens like a miracle above understanding. I don't really deserve it. It happened, so to say, above the normal way of the way things happen. So therefore, I choose God as my portion intellectually and even as my lot. And therefore, I'm prepared, every soul is prepared to give his soul ultimately. To sanctify God's life. Even though for the last 20 whatever years, the clipper prevailed over him, over this sinner, who is now to prepare to do self-sacrifice. All his life, he lived a life of sinning, God forbid. And he couldn't, he couldn't overcome it. As our sages say, what's a sinner? What's a rasha? A rasha is a person named a rasha who's a wicked person that control of the heart. Meaning the animal soul clippers situated in the left part of the heart has over, overpowered his godly soul. And maybe it's like been like that for years upon years upon years. The coal market. Shabal the day the same, nevertheless, with the face of talent, of faith. In the faith of one God, the Yisadasa, whose foundation of Baha'i Kodesh in the level divine, so called the heights of holiness, which I explained before, what is holiness? The holiness of the soul is the wisdom of the soul. The beneficial to the godly soul. Shabbat, in this part of the soul, is clothed within it. Oh, it ain't safe, the infinite light of God. Oh, when you touch, when you touch the essence of the soul, when you touch the essence of a Jew, boom, an affinity is revealed. Unlimited powers are revealed. Unlimited capabilities are revealed. And what happens? All clippers are nullified. 
And they vanish as they though they never have been there. Mamish. And that's the beauty. The beauty is that ultimately a person that does this awakens his neshama and he gives away, he's ready to give up his life. So therefore he's ready to give, he's, he wants to connect to God on a supernatural level, on above comprehension level. That everything that he has done, we thought was important, or we thought was even a challenge, or should nothing, are irrelevant. As we say in the verse, all the nations, which means, the, which in Kabbalah, when you say the nations, Eclipus, are nothing before it. That's the problem. When you try to, to challenge Eclipus, when you try to challenge your animistic soul only with your intellect, then you have a challenge to nations. Oh, there's a challenge between the Jewish people and the nations, which means there's a challenge between godliness and, and, not, and, and the world. There's this seemingly this great battle. The truth is, if a yid can connect to the to this essence of his soul, if a yid can connect to the wisdom of his soul, to this infinite level of his soul, the faith of his soul, he'll realize nothing is challenging. There's no challenge. There never was a challenge. Because it's all irrelevant. It's all not important. Out of chatter, it's not even true that there's a struggle between godliness. And clippers will disappear like never was there. As it says, for all your enemies, O Lord, referring to the clippers again, when usually those expressions are usually Dovan Amelech, is talking about, about, about his own clippers, about his own challenges. He calls it your enemies. He says, your enemies can evade you. They disappear, they perish. They will be like scattered. Nothing, they disappear. Suddenly you realize all your challenges were not even a challenge. It was in your mind a challenge. It was never a challenge. That's the beauty of Ur over Chayshik in general. Kedusha over Klippa. We make it a challenge. But if we reveal our true essence, there's no challenge. It never was a challenge. As it says, wax melts before fire. So shall the wicked perish. It means our own wickedness. Right? So you have a wax candle, looks beautiful. You put a flame there, bingo, it disappears. It gets consumed in the light. Oh, but it was an important thing. It was, it was a... It was a solid, solid concept. And now it disappears. It slowly becomes, it melts and consumed into the fire. And that's what it says, the hills. So therefore we make, this is the, maybe the expression, turn a molehill into a mountain. We made, we made clippers into a mountain. Oh, look at this big mountain. I have to overcome the mountain. I have to, I have to overcome this big hill in front of me. It will melt like wax. It will disappear. That's it. So you're making in your mind, we have made because everything we tried to challenge and we make the hill into a big mountain. And then we realize there was nothing there. So all these verses illustrate our clip is vanish when light of God is found in the chakma of divine soul is revealed. When we can, can oh, waken up our soul, waken up the divine part of our soul, not the way the soul comes into understanding and the way the soul comes into emotions. Awaken up the essence of the soul. Awaken up the wisdom of the soul, the faith of the soul, which we all have. Therefore, despite the fact that Kippus always had the upper hand over a sinner, he's it, right? Because he made this big mountain. I can't overcome it. I can't overcome this. This is the way it is. I'm, uh, the mountain is too big to overcome. The, the, the tide is too big to, 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 to do. He's able to overcome it when his faith is challenged. We need to challenge our faith, maybe. 
Maybe if we challenge our faith, we'll awaken up our faith. We should never come to a challenge of faith that somebody puts a gun to our head to class for Shalom and says, you either bow down to an idol or I'll kill you. Class for Shalom. We should challenge our faith within ourselves. We thus see that a Jew has an inherent ability to overcome temptations by the virtue of his soul's hidden love of God originating the faculty of wisdom of his soul. We need merrily to arouse it. Rebbe now goes on to explain how the hidden love also comprises the fear of God. Next, next concept that he asked a long time ago. How do you have in this love the concept of the oneness of God, the fear of God? Because we need both. We need both attributes. You have to love God. The two emotions, love and fear. That's the observance of prohibition, the biblical commandments. In the earth, this force of the divine light, of the insight, the infinite light. I'm You realize, I hope you realize how many times the Alta Rebbe said this statement. Hundreds of times he said this statement. He said the statements. I'm just looking at it right now. He said the statement even today for five times already. <laughs> because I believe, to me at least, now the Rebbe is trying to impress upon us this concept. If you don't believe in this, you're going to have a hard time revealing this. Every Jew has oid ain't saif baruchua hamaluvis bechach mishav nefesh. Every Jew has an infinite part of God that is enclosed in the wisdom of his soul. That's what he said at the beginning of Tanya, that every Jew has a godly soul that's a chelak elatam mimal mamish. That's a part of God mamish. Really, and that's what the meaning of it is. Because every Jew has a neshama, which in his neshama, he has chachma, he has wisdom of the soul, and in wisdom is ayin saif. Because that's the concept of wisdom, as he explained it over and over again. That the aspect of wisdom, true wisdom, is kayachma, is a concept of infinity. It has within it the consequence. It is infinite. Wisdom is infinite. So if you have, if you can connect to that level of the soul, if we all can awaken up that level of infinity within the wisdom of our soul, you should realize the power of that capability. It can banish, it can repel the any sitra akhra, any outer forces, aklipas, and any coverings, shall a yacha yagia fill up bush, they wouldn't touch you. If you have if we had the, if we can do that, and we can think about it and realize the power of our soul, nothing will, nothing can touch us. Nothing can affect us. Not only in the outside, it won't even affect your inside. It won't even affect your garments of your, of your being. The thought, speech, and action that express one's faith in the unity of God. That is, not only can the clipper not weaken one's faith, they can't even prevent his faith from expressing itself in thought, speech, and action. That's it, because your faith is so strong. You is maminim b'nei maminim. Our faith is un, unbridled. Our faith is, is, is so powerful. that if we only revealed our faith, we would have unlimited power in thought, speech, and action. That alignment bin been That means the divine light best of the chachmah it would it, it withstand itself of self-sacrifice. Uh, and what that means, what means self-sacrifice? Lips and nafshay. What does that mean? We always think lips and nafshay means that, you know, somebody's going to kill me, God forbid. But the word is nefesh. 
It's the giving over of the soul. When I do an Aveda, God said, I gave my soul over. I was, I was gave it's had to be my nefesh. I have to go and see the snafish. I have to stick to my face, not to give over myself. I feel I shouldn't I'm ready to do Mr. Snapfish, not to give over my soul. I don't have to think about what Mr. Snapfish means that I'm gonna bow down to an idol. I think I'm ready to give up my life. I'm not gonna bow down to that. But if you think about it, if I have the power of Mr. Snapfish, not to bow down to an idol, I have the power of this same faith not to do one Aveda, not to do one sin. Because every sin is against the faith of God. Munas Hashem. Doesn't make a difference whether it's Avoid Zara be asking me to bow down to an idol or asking me not to uh, not to do put on today. That's for sure. Or not to eat kosher. Etc. etc. Apples bowing down to Avoid Zara, which that everybody knows the biggie. Seemingly, I've shown a man, but Klal will believe it, even though he doesn't believe in the, in the idol. He never believed in the idol, but still, he's not going to bow down to the idol. In which case, it's not his faith that is being challenged, but an expression in an act prostrating itself. And even if an expression of faith, the Jew is willing to give up his life, even though he's not breaking his faith, doing an action. Okay, who cares? I'll bow down to the idol. I don't, I don't really believe in that. So too, he will, he will uh, sacrifice his life not to speak falsely, God forbid. To speak, to speak against God, God forbid. His words do not reflect his true feeling. Nevertheless, his heart is complete with God, but he wouldn't do that either. This readiness of self-sacrifice, not an expression of one love, one's love of God, which reveals itself when it confronted the test of faith, for his love is not directly affected by such an empty action of words. And it expressed the fear contained in the hidden love, the fear of being torn away from God. It's not the love of God. Any of us don't do an Aveda because of the fear of God. The guilt. Fear of Gehenim, whatever the fear might be. And this is called fear contained in the love. The Ava Tivish and Neftal Kiss, which is the natural love found in the divine soul of every Jew. The Chvetz of the Tayna Betiva, who is interesting. That means it's, it's, it's uh, nature, desire, and will is Ladovic to attach itself to the origin source, which is the light of God. Because of this love, but it's such as that in this desire, it instinctively recoils in fear and dread for touching, God forbid, even the fringe of impurity of idolatry, which denies the faith in God's unity. Right? So everybody knows that. Everybody. Loves God, he wouldn't worship an idol, or he fears God that he would not bow down to an idol, even though he uh, doesn't, uh, even though when he bows, physical action, he doesn't mean it, or he's forced to say something against God, he doesn't really mean it, he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. No Jew would do that. I feel of a Vishak saying, Shadiva, my master, believe in even with such con contact involved, only the outer garments, namely idolatrous speech and action, without any faith whatsoever in his heart, in the validity of the idol worship. So even this soul dreads, this dread represents the fear contained in this hidden love. So when a Jew, meaning ultimately, the Alter Rebbe is saying, because we're finishing this chapter, the Jew considers that he'd be willing to give up his life. Rather, when he considers he'd give up his life and be parted from God, 
you will realize, truly realize that, hey, you should certainly refrain from sin from every, for the very same reason. Since the very sin tears them away from God. Number two, you ought to fulfill all the commandments, for through them, he achieves, he achieves objection of this hidden love, unity with God. So therefore, they both come from the same place. They both come that I want to be, I don't want to sunder myself, I want to separate myself from God, and I want to connect myself to God. Because that's the source, that's the real, that's the real purpose of my godly soul, to connect myself to God and not disconnect myself to God. And therefore, I have faith in God. This faith makes that I don't want to have any disconnection. And I only want connection. I don't want to have, I don't want to break this relationship. I only want a relationship. And I don't want a relationship even that's going to show that I'll have, on one hand, I won't bow, I'll bow, but not feel it in my heart. Because I know that's not real to me. And therefore, not only I'm not going to have any feel in my heart to worship an idol, I'm not going to even bow down to an idol. Because I'm not going to allow myself to do this, whether through the aspect of love of God or for the concept of the love which brings about my fear of God to disconnection. So therefore, my disconnection, what the Altered everyone say over here, my disconnection or my, my averting disconnection God comes from my love of God. Because I love God if I don't want to disconnect from him. So that's why the love of God is a source of both mitzvahs, I say, positive commandment, I want the connection to God. And love of God is also the source of all negative commandments. Because I don't want to do a negative commandment because that will disconnect me. So if you look at everything in that way, so if I have Mesira Snapfish, if I have self-sacrifice, not to bow down to an idol superficially. Why? Because I don't want to separate myself from God. And every Aveda, every sin is being separated from God. Every sin separates you from God. Not only the idol worship separates me from God. Every sin separates me from God. And since I love God, why would I want to separate myself from God? And every mitzvah, Connects me to God. So therefore, I want to do every mitzvah. Why would I pass on a mitzvah when I want to have a connection to God? Because I know that I have, I have a true desire. I have a mitzvah to I have a true hidden love that's in the chachma, in the wisdom of my soul, which is the infinite aspect of the soul, which wants to have this connection to God. In this way, one may utilize his hidden love and the fear of God contained within it as to motivate him not only not to worship an idol, which we all know we wouldn't do, but to do everything. Because the source it is the source of everything. Everything is about connection and disconnection. So, just like I wouldn't bow down to an idol, because not because I have a great understanding in the connection or disconnection to this idol, but I, I because I connected my essence to my sneshama, which I know that I'm not going to do it. That's not going to happen. So why can't it, why can't I, why can't I wake up the essence of my soul that it's not going to happen to not talk lashon Same aver, concept of a, a, a disconnection. My lashon my evil talk is disconnecting me from God. My hate, my je jealousy, all these things are disconnecting me from God. My love of God should oh, be able to awaken up my, the essence of my soul to be able to realize that I shouldn't want to have this disconnection of God. As we'll explain at length in the upcoming chapters. So we will go at length, because this is a very important thing. This concept is extremely important to a Bainini, to a person that wants to be a Bainini. He struggles with this. 
he struggles with this, overcoming simple t- temptations and desires that he has in his life. And if for some reason, it's something that he, it's hard for him to overcome and hard for him to rationalize this, to explain to his brain that he shouldn't, if he doesn't, if he's willing to give up his life not to bow down to an idol or not to give up his Yiddishkeit, which is above rationalization, why, for some reason, am I not willing to give up other things? Why do I, why do I, I comprehend and I'm ready to go give up my life, not to bow on to an idol, but I'm not ready in my life, not to give, to give up my life, not to talk uh, evil talk. Because so I've decided that, 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 that worshiping an idol is, is a bigger cutoff then you know, how, how do I know what's a bigger part of from God or what's a bigger, it's a, How do I know? How do I know it breaks up a relationship? You see, actually, in the world, it's the opposite. It's a small thing that breaks relationships. It's not always a big thing that breaks relationships. It's a small, it's a talk, the way we talk to each other, the way we, the way we look at each other, the way we express one to another. Small things that break relationships. How do I know? And if we look at it, Look at this whole thing as this is a relationship that I'm going to have with God, whether it's whether it's a, whether it's through Ava, through positive actions, or whether it's through Yida, not doing negative things. That's why you have the two emotions, Ava and Yida, because in life, that's the way it is. There's two expressions: the way I connect something through love, the way I don't want to bring other things in that will break this love. So everything has a yin and a yang. Everything has a plus and a minus. There are certain things that create this love in a, in a, in a, in a positive way. And there are certain things that will break this love in a negative way. And that's what you have. Mitzvahs are say and mitzvahs lay You have, just like you have the relationship between human beings, you have these two expressions, positive and negative. We want to have a positive relation and keep all negativity out. Make sure not to have negativity, think negative things in this relationship. Never to have anger, never to have hate, never to have jealousy, never to bring other things into this relationship that don't belong here. So do we have between us and God? You have the positive, positive mitzvahs, and you have the things you don't want to bring in into the relationship between us and the Kaddish Baruch the negative commandments, all based on the same concept, the love that I have with God. Of course, I want to, I have a relationship with God because I have a love to God. That's why I have these two modes of this relationship with him. And this is important to us, to Bain him. And I'll tell you, I'll continue to explain to it, but this is an important thing. So the first thing you have to know is you have a godly soul and your godly soul has within it a spark of God, has within it infinity, and you have the capability to overcome it. If you don't believe in that, you will not have the capability to overcome. You need to believe that you have in yourself an infinite power. You have God in, in you, which gives you power above everything, and all those things that you think are, 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 are challenges will disappear. If you overcome, that completes the time of the day. Today is the fourth day of the month, it's in chapter 23 through chapter 28. Do chapter 23 to chapter 28 until him. You would do the chitas of today. Which of today, with the help of God, we're going to have a class portion of week, Sif of the Rebbe, teaching of the Rebbe, the Pasha. Everybody's welcome to come at 10 a.m either at Chabad in person or on this same Zoom number or on Torah Direct. Have a wonderful, beautiful, happy, healthy day.